Good morning, morning. and welcome into God's house for worship. In our gospel reading for today, Jesus returns to a region he had left a year before. The last time he was there, he cured a demon-possessed man and drove out 2,000 demons from him. At that time, the people of the region feared Jesus and his power, and they begged him to leave, and Jesus did so. The former demoniac wished to go with Jesus, but instead Jesus left him behind in that region to be his missionary to the Gentiles of that land. Today we see Jesus return to that region, and we see that the former demoniac's mission work had borne fruit, as people bring to Jesus a man in need of healing. Jesus, in his response, however, will show them that he came not just to heal simple physical ailments, but he came to heal our sin-sick souls. We'll follow the order of worship of setting one on page 154 of the hymnal, and we'll begin with singing hymn 548. There's an error in the bulletin. Uh, The correct first hymn is 548. May God bless our worship this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature, and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me. A sinner.
Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise you. We bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You sit at the right hand of God the Father. Have mercy on us. For you only are holy. You only are the Lord. You only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, are most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you reveal your mighty power chiefly in showing mercy and kindness. Grant us the full measure of your grace, that we may obtain your promises and become partakers of your heavenly glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is recorded in the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 4 through 7. Thus writes the prophet Isaiah. Tell those who have a fearful heart, be strong, do not be afraid. Look, your God will come with vengeance. With God's own retribution, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf will be unplugged. The crippled will leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute will sing for joy. Waters will flow in the wilderness, and streams in the wasteland. The burning sand will become a pool, and in the thirsty ground 
there will be springs of water. The word of the Lord. We continue with the psalm of the day, Psalm 146. Those who are bowed down, the Lord loves the righteous. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations, praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The second reading is recorded in the book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Thus records for us St. Luke. Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour, an hour of prayer. A certain man who was lame from birth was carried there every day and placed at the temple gate, which is called Beautiful, so that he could beg for donations from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter the temple, he asked them for a donation. Peter looked directly at and did John. Peter said, look at us. So the man paid close attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I will give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately the man's feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk. He entered the temple courts with them, walking, jumping, and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. They recognized him as the one who used to sit begging for money at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Out of respect for the words and works of Christ, and as you are able, please stand to acclaim the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel appointed for the 16th Sunday after Pentecost is recorded in Mark chapter 7, verses 31 to 37. We read, Jesus left the region of Tyre again and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee within the region of the Decapolis. They brought a man to him who was deaf and had a speech impediment. They pleaded with Jesus to place his hand on him. Jesus took him aside in private, away from the crowd. He put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. After he looked up to heaven, he sighed and said, Ephatha! which means, be opened. Immediately the man's ears were opened, his tongue was set free, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus gave the people strict orders to tell no one, but the more he did so, the more they kept proclaiming it. They were amazed beyond measure and said, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn 769.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I always remembered the two stories clearly in my head, but only recently did I really learn what they meant. I was just an average resident of the Decapolis, just trying to make my way like everyone else. But everything I knew about the world changed when he came for the first time, and then it changed again when he came to our town the second time. Before he came the first time, only one thing had ever really shaken me. It was that man from the Gerasenes. The man who spoke like he had 2,000 monstrous voices coming from his bowels. I was a strong man, and they had me and some others try to restrain him, but eventually that stopped working. No one could bind him. He broke free from the chains, and he destroyed the shackles, and he ran off to cry and howl and cut himself in the tombs outside of town. Then he came from across the sea, that Jew and his twelve followers. He encountered that madman, yet he, he feared that Jewish man. Then he demanded that all of the unclean spirits come out of him. And they left and went into the herd of pigs. And all the pigs ran off of a cliff and drowned into the sea. I feared that madman, but that Jew, he drove away whatever had maddened him with ease. I have to say, I feared his power even more, and I was among those who begged him to leave our land out of fear. But then the madman came back to our town of completely sound mind. And he told us about that man. Jesus was his name, apparently. And he told us how this Jesus had healed him. That he had been possessed by demons. And the Lord, the God of Israel, had had mercy on him and drove the demons from him and healed him from his affliction. I must say it was much to process But then the next year, we heard that this Jesus was coming back to our region again. It was a surprise, to be sure. These Jews usually don't like to associate with us Gentiles, as they call us. But after listening to that former madman tell us about Jesus so much, how he clearly was healed from his demon-induced mania, when I heard that Jesus was returning to us, I couldn't help but think, could he heal anything? Could he heal my friend? I learned quickly that he could, and now I've learned that Jesus can heal everything, especially the most important thing. I learned this firsthand when Jesus returned, and I immediately thought of my friend. He'd been deaf and mute I'd helped him out for the longest time, but I couldn't help but think how isolated he must be. Not being able to talk or hear, not being able to communicate with the rest of us like normal. So when we heard Jesus was coming, we remembered what the former demoniac had told us about Jesus' power to heal. So we took my friend by the hand to Jesus, and we begged him to just lay his hands on him and heal him. Jesus then took my friend away from us privately, and I learned later what he did. Jesus put his fingers in my friend's ears and touched his tongue. It seemed odd, but I suppose Jesus was just trying to communicate with my friend in what way he could, since he couldn't hear. Then he looked up to heaven and and sighed as though he was praying, and he said, Be opened! And suddenly my friend could hear and speak, and he came back to us hearing and speaking, and uh, I could hardly believe it. 
But then Jesus told us all something strange. He told us not to tell anyone about what he had done. I didn't understand. I, I, I just couldn't understand that. How could you? I have to admit, I did tell some people. You can't just see something like that and just not tell anyone. But now I understand why Jesus told us this. He didn't want us to make this healing all about what he was. Because now, just a few years later, I've learned that Jesus did something even greater than this. A few of those 12 followers of his, and some more, came to our village again. And they told us that Jesus had done something to heal all of us. I didn't understand at first. I didn't know what I needed healing from. But then they explained that we, we all suffer consequences from the evil that is in the world. Some people, like my formerly deaf and mute friend, experience it in greater ways, but we all experience it in one way or the other. They told us that this was because we have disobeyed the God of heaven and earth. The only true God there is. And that because of it, we are all, in our hearts, deaf and mute. We do not hear God or his law, and we continuously disobey it. And thus, we all deserve afflictions far greater than deafness or speech impediments. We deserve eternal destruction in hell. But that's what Jesus truly came to heal, they told us. And then I learned that Jesus died. It happened. He, he died. He was crucified to heal our souls. I learned just how much we understated what Jesus did when we said, He has done everything well. He did everything perfect so that He could heal us with His righteousness. Jesus healed that demoniac. He healed my deaf and mute friend. Jesus healed me. He healed us all. Jesus can heal everything and everyone. He is our true God, our King of glory. He gave his life for us. He took upon himself the sin of the nations, Jew and Gentile alike. His hand can do more than just heal the physically afflicted. He can heal our sin-sick souls. And I learn that he still is our deliverer to this day. I learned that after Jesus died, he came back to life. And from what I saw Jesus do, I knew it must be true. He can heal everything. Of course, he can heal death itself. And that is why I was baptized into his name. So I too could be connected to the life, death, and resurrection of that great healer who can heal everything, even death. So I could live forever as he lives forever. If you too believe and are baptized, you too shall be healed by Jesus. And you too shall rise. You too shall live forever. Amen. Please stand. We join the confession of faith of all Christians, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with the prayer of the church on page 164. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son, through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Strengthen and defend your church, that by your word and sacraments faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you, who now rest from their labors. Console those who are mourning or living with sadness. Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again. We continue with the offering and the offering hymn. At this time, please take a moment to sign the friendship registers located on the inside of the pews. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this sacrament is a blessed gift from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
It is a medicine of immortality meant to give us eternal life by forgiving our sins. This is indeed a powerful medicine, and as such, it is dangerous if not used according to Jesus' instructions. Before we partake, we must repent of our sins and sincerely wish to abandon them. And furthermore, when we take it together, we express unity of belief with one another. As such, we ask that only members of our church and those churches in fellowship with us to partake of this sacrament today. We would love to have any guests not in fellowship with us to partake in the future. Please speak with me sometime after the service if you would like to make that happen. And now, therefore, since we are here assembled in the name of the Lord to receive his holy testament, let us proceed to the use and administration of the sacrament. Please stand. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock until he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Holy Holy, holy Lord God of heavenly hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be our Savior, our Redeemer, and the messenger of your grace. Through him you made all things. In him you are well pleased. He is the incarnate Word, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To fulfill your promises, he stretched out his hands on the cross and released from eternal death all who believe in you. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your Son's body and blood. Send us your Spirit, Unite us as one and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O God our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Oh, Christ. 
Please stand. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for the closing hymn, Hymn 409. Good morning once again, and thank you all for worshiping with us today. A uh, special welcome to all of our visitors today. We hope you join us again for worship sometime soon. Uh, just uh, a few announcements to make note of. 
I'll make a note of putting this in the bulletin in future months, or in future weeks, but uh, we are planning to do some repairs to the water damage that has happened to the stained glass windows, starting with these two back here, and uh, that will cost us, we're looking at an estimate of somewhere between three and $5,000. So just so that the church is aware, we will discuss that further at the next voters meeting, but uh, we just thought we'd, be, we'd make you aware of that upcoming, poss uh, that upcoming expense soon. Uh, secondly, we will be resuming adult Bible class today, uh, uh, and uh, fifth through eighth grade catechism classes will also be beginning this Wednesday evening, starting at 6 p.m. Uh, today, I would heartily encourage uh, everyone to attend the Bible class that we will be getting, that we will be beginning today uh, after church. Shortly after, we will have a quick choir practice, and then uh, so 10 to 15 minutes, and then. We'll begin our Bible class, but uh, the Bible class that we'll be going through is one on uh, friendship, evangelism, and how one by one the church grows. Uh, if you didn't know, statistically, 86% of unchurched people who joined a church did so because a, a friend invited them. Uh, only about 2% came from the pastor himself inviting people, uh, another small percentage by, and other small percentages by things like canvassing or uh, certain outreach programs like VBS and such. But the vast majority of, of unchurched people who join a church do so because a friend invited them. If you have unchurched family and friends and you're wondering about how you can reach out to them, um, I would highly encourage you to attend this Bible study as it has some very informative insights on how you can reach out to them using those real relationships that you have with other people. So just an encouragement. Uh, other than that, God's blessings on the rest of your day. I will see the choir in a moment.